the crackdown would continue uh, in the continuing days. Probably the bloodiest event was, uh, or the bloodiest event was, uh, the crackdown on the Vujek coal mine, uh, during which nine coal, uh, coal miners were, were uh, simply shot when they were uh, trying to resist um, the authorities by uh, launching a strike deep down in their mine. Um, also, there was general repression from the from the security services. There were there were more and more wiretapping. Uh, there were there were more and more cases of of these agents trying to infiltrate various various groups. So, in Polish society, especially among in within the trade union, there was a huge paranoia because anyone could technically be an informer. And if you were uh, somehow involved in this dissident work, uh, then you simply risked a, a severe uh, jail sentence and uh, you, you would lose your job. The repercussions for your family were very poor. Um, also, often there was a form of collective punishment that your children would, be, uh, would not be able to attend the university they wanted, they wanted to. Uh, so, uh, people were certainly pressed into uh, refraining from working and organizing in the Solidarity Trade Union. By 1982, uh, the results were, were visible. Less and less people were willing to uh, organize in, in, in the trade union. Uh, by the end of the year, uh, most of, uh, of, of, of the measures that had been introduced during mar martial law were lifted due to this assessment of the situation that uh, the threat had passed, so to say. Um, and then finally, on July 22nd, 1983, it was officially lifted, uh, July 22nd being a national holiday that um, was commem commemorating the establishment of the so-called uh, Lublin government in uh, 1944 when the Soviet Union initially created its first version of a puppet government for, for Poland. So they, they chose a strongly communist national holiday to, to end martial law on. Uh, and for the remaining of, of, the, of the 1980s, times remained tough because uh, martial law had also paralyzed Poland's economy to a great uh, degree. So this uh, economic crisis and malaise that had been going on since 1976 really it continued well into the 1980s. It's really throughout the 1980s because Poland's economy, once communism fell in 1989, was in shambles. And the first couple of years with this uh, shock therapy and transition into a market economy were also very difficult. So you could say that the light uh, in, in, at the end of the tunnel was really coming somewhere around 93, 4, 5, things started improving, but very slowly. Uh, it, it was really by 97, 8, around the, the turn of the millennium that, that you could really start feeling that those worst days had, had passed. So from uh, 1976 to the mid-90s, a good 20 years or so in Polish history were very difficult uh, economically. Uh, fortunately, um, naturally, there were things that could, could have been done better during that transition period in the early 90s, but it did lay a foundation from which the Polish economy would steadily grow. Uh, initially, the main problem was unemployment, but uh, GDP-wise, the economy was growing, and uh, it had been growing uh, since 1991. So uh, up until uh, the pandemic in, in 2020, Poland, together with Australia, had the world's... Uh, <laughs> longest consecutive growth, economic growth. And that's amazing. It must have looked very different, of course, in 1981 when martial law was declared. Who would have thought mm. that within eight years the Berlin Wall itself would be tumbling? Extraordinary. Yes, for, for many people, they thought it was a nail in the coffin for their aspirations for... But in actual fact, it was a nail in the coffin for the communists. Yes, yes. But we didn't know it at the time. Mm. That's a marvellous thing, of course. With the benefit of hindsight, you see things in a different way from how they seemed at the time. But that's been marvellous. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, we must develop these terms in future programmes. 
There we are, alas, we've come to the end of another programme. It's quite an interesting canter through, I think, the course of martial law. And as I was saying, and if you come to Poland today, very different from how it must have looked in 1981, when there must have been very little hope that Poland would emerge to be the major European country it has now become. Well, it just shows that history sometimes does give you a happy ending. And alas, we have now ended. So thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Poland Daily History.